I want to give a quick shout out to my patrons. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much for your support. Hey y'all, it's Kay from The Literary Apothecary and welcome back to my channel. Now this week we're going to be doing some different videos. This coming weekend, this Saturday the 29th is my birthday and I thought I would do a couple different videos for you all to get to know me a little bit better. So today we're going to be doing my favorite things book tag. Um, I saw this on a fictional escapist channel and I will link his video down in the description below. He did a great job with these prompts um, and probably a lot better than I'll do because y'all know I have such a hard time picking a favorite of almost everything and this is a list of different favorites. So we'll see how this goes. I kind of wrote out my answers a little bit ahead of time, um, but there's some that I could not pick just one. So I'm just gonna dive right in. If you wanna follow along, the prompts will be down in the description below. Um, so let's just get into it. So prompt number one is your favorite musician or band. And if you've been around, if you've talked to me at all, um, in Discord, you know probably that I'm obsessed with 80s music. I'm forever stuck in the 80s. Um, so a lot of my favorite musicians come from their prime was in the 80s, including George Michael, who is so special to my heart. A lot of people say they have like spirit animals or they wanna have a spirit animals. To me, I have a spirit person and that's George Michael. He just reaches my soul. His music reaches my soul in a way that no one else can. And when I need a little bit extra boost in confidence or a better mood or just to feel a certain emotion, I put on one of his songs because he just reaches me in a way that no one else can. Um, along with the 80s theme, we have Elton John, who of course is still smashing it today, but most known for his 80s music. Um, and Prince, R.P. Prince, he was so special. His guitar riffs were incredible. Prince was a one-man show. He had a band with him, but he was a one-man show. He sang, he played the guitar amazingly, and he could dance all in one show. Um, one of the best Super Bowl halftime shows was Prince. He was playing Purple Rain and then it started to rain and he just kept playing and it was incredible. I will link that down in the description below too if I can find it. Um, along with those, some more modern artists include Bruno Mars. His music just makes me wanna dance every single time. Um, Pharrell, his song Happy is one of my happy songs. Every time I put that on, I can't help but be happy and smile and dance and have a good time. And also, and I know a lot of people are going to think, oh no, not them, but Coldplay, I know those are one of those like bands that people always kind of make fun of other people for liking, but I absolutely love their music. And I love Chris Martin. And after George Michael died, Chris Martin did a tribute to George Michael during one of the British Musical Awards. And it just had me sobbing, not only because I miss George Michael already at that moment, and it, you know, paid tribute to his music and his life, but also just, he did such an amazing job of singing um, different corners and they kind of paired up his voice with George Michael's voice and did side by side. It was just beautiful tribute. I'll try to link that down below too, if I think of it after I'm editing. Um, also, of course, I can't say music without giving a shout out to one of my favorite people in the world, Snoop Dogg. Um, little known fact, well, I think it's becoming more and more known these days, but I absolutely love Snoop Dogg. I don't know what it is about him, but I love him. I want to be best friends with him. I just want to hang out for a day with Snoop Dogg and just chill. He seems like the most chill, the most fun person to be with. Prompt number two, um, top three favorite films. Now this is a hard one for me because, um, especially since I've been reading more and more, I have a hard time sitting through an entire film. I have a better time with TV shows, but still my attention span is horrible with anything film related. But I do have some, um, I tried to think of 
Films that are my go-to repeat film watches when I just need something to watch um, in, in long form, movie form. So that would be Love Actually. I absolutely love that movie. People call it a Christmas movie because it's all about Christmas, but I will watch that movie any time of the year. Um, the Big Fish is one of those movies that a lot of people think is really weird. A lot of people don't like, but I absolutely love it. Um, Ewan McGregor plays this character whose dad essentially told all of these crazy stories about his life. And, you know, it's the set theory of a fisherman telling a story over and over and over again and the fish getting bigger and bigger and bigger as he tells this story of catching this fish until the point where it's ginormous, unbelievable size. Um, so so the big fish also of course dead poets society with robin williams absolutely ugh, makes me cry every single time especially now that we've lost robin williams and the birdcage another robin williams movie as you can tell i love robin williams um the birdcage is something special robin williams and nathan lane play this gay couple and they have to pretend that they're not gay i think if i remember right Nathan Lane dresses as a woman and Robin Williams is like her husband and they've got like this, the parents of their son, I think, if I remember right. I'm, it's been a while since I watched this. I think it's the parents of their son who's played, one of them's played by Gene Hackman, uh, is coming to meet them for the first time, but they're very conservative and don't approve of gay couples. And so they're pretending to be a straight couple and it's just hilarious, absolutely hilarious. Um, so prompt number three, favorite scent. Um, I've got a couple baked, fresh baked, baked bread, um, fresh cookies and coffee. Those things just music to my stomach, music to my soul. Also, the smell that John has, you know, every person has a different natural scent and some are good and some are bad. And I just love John's scent. It just sets my soul at ease. Um, prompt number four, your favorite Disney film. Y'all know I love Disney. Um, the two that I grew up watching the most for myself instead of what my sister made me watch was Beauty and the Beast. Obviously, I had dreamed of being Belle and having that huge library. And I related the most to Belle because of her books and she just wanted to be herself no matter what other people said. And also Mulan because in the original Disney film, the animated film, Mulan was this girl that wanted to take care of her family. Um, she was kind of the black sheep in the family. She was out of place. She wasn't a typical Japanese daughter. She was clumsy. She didn't want to marry. She just wanted to be herself. And then the war comes, the Hans are threatening war and all the sons are called in to um, help fight the Huns and they don't have a son in the family. So that leaves it to the elderly father who's got to use a cane to walk and Mulan doesn't want her dad to go to war. So she steals his, essentially the scroll that summons them, their ticket to war essentially, and dresses as a man and pretends to be a son in their family. And I just, something about that movie just spoke to me. I think it was the clumsiness of Mulan. She was so clumsy dropping things, but then she learns how to fight gracefully and amazing and just told me you can be whatever you want to be in life. Um, your favorite season fall by far because um, I love seeing the flowers in spring and the sunshine, but here in North Carolina, we call, or at least I call spring and summer, um, the season, the pollen season instead because there's just pollen everywhere and I'm allergic to pollen so it makes my allergies go crazy but in fall all of the things start dying and this sounds so morbid but all of the things start dying so there's less and less pollen but it's not as dreary as winter is usually here in North Carolina so fall is my weather 
Um, along with that, prompt number six is your favorite seasonal drink. And for me, that is any kind of apple cider in any of its forms. I love cider so much. And growing up in New York, fall was cider season where you could only get fresh cider in the fall at the cider mill that was right down the road. You got cider and you got donuts and it was the best place ever. We used to go there every year in elementary school for a field trip and it was like one of the best field trips ever because we got to see the cider being made and the donuts being made and then we got samples at the end. Like what kid doesn't love free donuts and cider? It was amazing. So apple cider in any of its forms, hot, cold, um, adult cider with the alcohol in there. I love cider in any of its forms. Um, prompt number seven, and we've just got a couple more prompts left. Favorite shirt or clothing. So, um, first of all, anything that is comfortable and that's not tight. I like loose fitting clothes that I don't have to worry about. Is this showing too much? Is this riding up? Um, anything that's like that, I absolutely love. But also I have this t-shirt that I often wear to bed or when I'm just sitting around the house that was my grandpa's shirt back in the <clears throat> late 90s, early 2000s. I forget what year it was. I want to say 2000, maybe 2003, the year that he died. I didn't, when my grandpa was, so my grandpa was my best friend growing up. And when I was in high school, I was a junior in high school and he was battling cancer, plus he had diabetes, so it was really bad. He had pancreatic cancer, and I spent every day of my junior year in high school until he died taking care of him after school. Um, and so I didn't get a lot of physical items from him when he died. I got more when my grandma died a couple years later. Um, but the one thing that I did get from him was this New York Yankees World Series championship shirt, t-shirt. It's like really ratty now because it's so old, um, 20 years old now at least, um, but it just reminds me of him and it's very comfortable and I just love it. Um, so, oh my gosh, we have a lot more prompts than I thought. And now we're getting to one that's going to take a while to get through because prompt number eight is your favorite author. So I've got these separated into some of my different uh, different categories. So some that just came off are my go-to. I will read anything written by them. I love them to pieces. I'll buy anything that they've written. Uh, you've heard me talk about a lot of these before on my channel. Diana Gabaldon, of course, author of the Outlander series. Toni Morrison, great um African-American writer writes with such soul that she just gets straight through to you, straight to your soul. Uh, Joan Didion is my favorite nonfiction writer. She writes essays, she writes memoirs. She also writes fiction and screenplays, or did. Um, she has recently passed, I think in the last year or two. Um, we're doing a very long read along of her essays that are included in the collection we tell ourselves stories in order to live um, once a month on my discord and some of them are great amazing some of them are eh, can you can pass on but she just writes especially she, atmospheres she can capture the atmosphere of a location so well it makes you feel like you're there um, and also uh Terry Pratchett, of course, author of the Discworld series, Universe. Um, he has a way, first of all, his wit and his humor is the best bar none. Um, but he also has a way of taking real life issues, serious issues, social, societal issues, and putting them in his fantasy world, his disc world, commenting on them, but also having a little bit of lightness to them and, um, comedy humor to them just he just has a way that just gets to me um so my special mentions my classic authors two authors that have a very special place in my heart include f scott fitzgerald just 
especially with the great gatsby something about that just hits me every time and john steinbeck who is often not talked about as much when you talk about classic authors but i find his writing to be very very accessible other people would call it maybe simplified it doesn't deal with a lot of heavy metaphors like some classic writers do um it's very straightforward very accessible i think it's one of those great places to start if you want to read classic authors especially american authors john steinbeck is a great place to start he's got some really amazing books that are often on the banned books list which to me is a significant a signifier that is this is a book you need to read of mice and men the grapes of wrath um we'll be reading his nonfiction book in i think september or october with christy uh travels with charlie which is all about him traveling the u.s with his dog charlie and i can't wait to read that that's one of few steinbeck books that i haven't read yet so authors that i've discovered since i've joined booktube include and these are some of my you know auto buy authors go to authors for modern writing modern fantasy writing um fonda lee of course the green bone saga i need to read her other works her ya science fiction books which i own i just have to find time to um but the green bone saga is some of the best writing i've ever read josiah bancroft authors of other of the books of babel series writes in such a dark but whimsical way i his writing is so unique. I've never read writing compared to his, and I can't wait for his new series to come out this fall, The Hexologist. I am so excited for that. And also Nicholas Eames, the author of the band series, Kings of the Wild and Bloody Rose. These books brought in um, like the 70s, 80s, and 90s music and references and bands into his fictional world of mercenary bands in such a fun way and they are great books if you need a break from the serious fantasies you need something a little bit more lighthearted. hearted are books that don't take them this themselves seriously so you shouldn't take them seriously either um but also you know they have those heartfelt moments that will make you take a pause um and then some of my favorite indie authors that I've discovered since I've joined booktube include John Palladino, even though I've only read one of his books so far, hopefully starting book two sometime this week. Um, I love him to pieces. He, he made me a fan of grimdark books um, and I just, I will sing his praises every day. Jim Wilborn, which was one of, he, Jim was one of the first indie self-pub books authors that I became friends with along with our third one Helen Reich Peterson um, those two are special to my heart because they were one of the first that I interacted with and they're just so special so so good and their writing is just absolutely fantastic hits you straight in the heart to the soul I can't wait to read their work new works that they're working on prompt number nine your favorite spot for reading would either be currently, um, I hope maybe this changes a little bit in once I move to a new place later this year, but my reading chair, of course, I got that specifically for reading. And honestly, my bed, ever since I had my shoulder surgery, I've got this like wedge pillow thing that I, ha I got first when I had my surgery to help me sleep at night because my arm was in a sling and I couldn't I didn't want to roll over it in my sleep so i got something to help keep me upright in my sleep and now i use it for reading every night before i go to sleep because it props me up at the perfect reading height i love it so in bed definitely um gotta go a little bit faster so this isn't so long our favorite food or dessert oh my gosh yes i love food i love eating i am secretly a hobbit so there's I love pizzas. I love a good burger, a really good greasy burger with some bacon on it. Mm. And I love seafood. I love just about anything with seafood in it. So 
those probably are my top three foods. I've also become a really big fan, thanks to John, of Indian food. So I guess those would be my top foods. My top desserts would be like a really good chocolate cake um, and snickerdoodle cookies. And I love a good milkshake too. Um, okay, so your favorite time of the day. I like to say that I'm neither a morning person nor a night owl, but more a like 10 to two type of person, like a lunchtime person. That's when I feel the most awake, the most alert, and I get I'm the most productive during that time. Um, your favorite color, I would say blues. Uh, I love blue, any kind of blues, but especially the bright colors. I love bright colors. I need more bright colors in my wardrobe so I can wear more bright colors. Um, top three favorite book. It said YouTubers, I'm counting booktubers. Leslie at the Nerdy Narrative, Stephanie at Mr. George Reads, Eric at Breakeven Books, um, Alan at Library of Alexandria, of course, Evie at She Was Only Evie, Derry at Derry Reads. Oh my gosh, there's so many. I am going to miss so many and I feel bad. Um, Philip Chase, I love watching Philip Chase's videos. Billers Grimm, um, I guess that's a good, that's not, that's more than three, so we'll just leave it there. Your favorite musical or play? By far, even though I love Hamilton and Into the Heights, to me it does not beat The Sound of Music, which I grew up watching every year with my grandma at Christmas time. So for me, it's a Christmas movie. Um, yeah, I that has a, such a special place in my heart and I just love it so much. And then our last prompt is your favorite place that you visited. I haven't visited many places yet. Um, I hope to change that in the future. Actually, uh, the first week in May, we're going to be going to Asheville, which I'm so excited about. I haven't been there yet, and I really want to go. It's in the mountains. They have the Biltmore Estate, which has a library that has 10,000 books in it. So y'all know I can't wait for that. I'm going to try to take at least pictures, if not videos, for that. Um, so I can share with at least my patrons, if not my... Um, all of you guys, my subscribers, but places I've actually been to, I would say Puerto Rico. I absolutely loved my time in Puerto Rico. Spent about a week there um, right after I graduated from college. And Colorado, we took a trip when I was young, right when my parents were getting divorced to Colorado and I absolutely loved it. I don't know why, but I have such fond memories of that place. I grew up in the middle of the woods in the country and just there's something about just being surrounded by nature that just sets my soul at ease. Um, this has been a stressful year, of course, as you guys know. Normally, staycations are where it's at for me. I love just having a staycation, just hanging out at home, reading, not having to go anywhere, do anything. Um, if I do take time off of work, I usually have a staycation. But this year has been so stressful for me. I just needed to get back out into nature. And I felt like taking a trip to Asheville would be the best time for that. So that's my video for my favorite things tag. Of course, I just mentioned Sound of Music. So it's a list of my favorite things. When the door slams, when the wind blows, when I'm feeling down, I just like to remember of my favorite things and then I will feel so bad. And now you've gotten my really bad singing along with it, which John says he loves, but it's so bad. That was really bad. I was trying to match um, that tone and it just didn't work. So that's my, my favorite things book tag. Uh, let me know your answers in the comments below. If you saw this and you want to do it, you want your subscribers to know you a little bit better, or in my case, way too much because I can't limit most of these things to just one. Um, feel free to go and do it. I'm not going to tag anyone in this. Just say, if you want to do it, consider yourself tagged. Um, as always, my Patreon and my Discord information will be in the description below. So if there are things that you've heard about on this tag that you want to talk about with me, come to the Discord and we'll chat about it. Uh, keep reading and I love y'all to the moon and back. Bye.